In astronomy, what you see behind me is one of the most iconic images. This is the famous Helix Nebula. A planetary nebula formed by a star, not so different from the Sun, that at the end of its lifetime released a huge amount of gas, leaving behind a white dwarf. A white dwarf that's still visible in the center and that actually has been studied by a lot of different astronomers over the years. And extremely recently, in March of 2025, researchers actually discovered that the unusual X-rays coming from the center of this nebula seem to be the result of an ancient planet destroyed by the central white dwarf possibly not so long ago. Essentially confirming that these unusual X-ray signals that were first detected over 40 years ago seem to be a direct confirmation that this object used to have a planet. A planet that has since been shredded and destroyed and potentially became some kind of a ring. And naturally this is not the first and not the last time we're going to be seeing signs of ancient planets around white dwarfs. As a matter of fact the majority of white dwarfs seem to contain something. Usually the signs of an absorbed or a destroyed planet, sometimes rings, but in some cases researchers also discovered actual white dwarf planets, with one that was recently analyzed basically becoming a new record holder. And so, a wonderful person, this is Anton. In this video we're going to discuss a relatively recent study and a somewhat recent analysis using the James Webb Space Telescope, reported in a study by Mary Ann Limbach and the team you see right here in April of 2025. And here this was an additional observation based on a discovery from 2020. A system known as WD1856-534, actually a triple system containing two red dwarfs and an orbiting white dwarf, was discovered to have a really bizarre planet. And because this is only about 80 light years away from us, this was a super exciting discovery. Because in this case, this planet was far enough from the white dwarf that it could now be directly observed. But before we discuss exactly what was discovered here, the first question here is, why exactly does this matter and why is this important? Well, as you probably know, today most of the exoplanets have essentially been discovered using the method right here. This is the transit method, a method where you basically look at a star and then try to discover shadows passing in front of a star with a regular interval. This is how the majority of planets so far have been discovered around pretty much most of these star systems. But these shadow observations don't really tell us much about the planet themselves other than their size. And though it is possible to sometimes analyze their atmosphere by looking at the region where the starlight passes through the atmosphere of the planet, this is an extremely difficult method. And so trying to identify the emission spectra of the actual planet, or to be more specific trying to identify what kind of an atmosphere they might have, so far has been sort of challenging. So we know that these planets are there and we know their size and sometimes their mass, but not what kind of planets they are, what's on their surface, or if they can be habitable and maintain stable conditions. Which is why scientists have actually been trying to discover a better way for direct imaging, physically looking at different planets and trying to find out what kind of light is coming from them in order to then find out what's in their atmosphere. But detecting direct light is super challenging, and so far only some planets have been seen this way. Here from this simulation you can see that it actually involves something known as the coronagraph, which essentially blocks the starlight, while also allowing us to study the star's corona. But most of the planets this has been applied to are usually very far from the star and are extremely different from anything we have in the solar system. And so basically this only works for gas giants in extremely wide orbits but also usually with very high temperatures in the atmosphere because this is the only way these planets become visible. Cold planets are extremely difficult to find even if they are far from the star. And to date not a single rocky planet has been observed directly. Mostly because usually they orbit much closer to the star or are essentially invisible if they are farther away. Moreover, not a single exoplanet that's colder than about 275 Kelvin or about 2 degrees Celsius has been seen at all. And that's because usually colder planets are super difficult to find using any of the telescopes and basically because they don't produce enough infrared emissions. But we obviously know such planets should exist and we also know that it should be possible to observe something once we discover the right environment. And here white dwarfs actually present us with a perfect opportunity. Mostly because white dwarfs by nature are extremely dim, but also dense enough to contain a planetary system that can actually stay stable for a pretty long time. As a matter of fact, in some of the previous videos about white dwarfs, we've discussed some of the more unusual discoveries when it comes to planetary objects and some white dwarfs that actually do have some really strange systems. 
But more importantly, since white dwarfs are so small and so dim, they generally reduce the contrast by so much that it makes a lot of objects in the white dwarf system stand out quite a lot. In other words, allowing us to see any object, assuming we have a powerful enough telescope. And in theory, if we could somehow detect a planet around a white dwarf and we could actually see it directly, it could then present us with a perfect opportunity to study everything about planetary evolution and to discover what happens to various planets once stars like our Sun essentially turn into white dwarfs. For example, can planets even survive this stage? And if so, what do they become? And I guess even more importantly, can a typical white dwarf system at some point potentially become habitable? We've discussed this idea in some of the previous videos, but so far all of this has been kind of hypothetical. We know that these planets are possible, we just don't really know where and how. And so let's discuss this new study and this new discovery. First of all, this of course involves the James Webb Space Telescope, the most powerful infrared telescope scientists currently possess, and a star approximately 80 light years away in the constellation of Draco. But in 2020, this system was confirmed to contain a planet. If you go online and if you try to find this planet inside the NASA Exoplanetary Database, here's roughly what the star system looks like. And this region right here, that's the so-called habitable zone. Now, even though NASA in this case reports the star as a K-type star, which technically this object kind of is, in reality this is a white dwarf that's basically much, much colder than usual. In other words, this is actually a white dwarf that's really old, possibly at least 6 billion years old. And as a result, its temperature is approximately 4400 degrees Celsius, 8000 Fahrenheit. In other words, it's technically much colder than the Sun. But surprisingly, it also contains a planet in a very tight orbit. Here it takes approximately 34 hours per orbit, which already kind of presents us with a mystery. It's not entirely clear if this is a planet that used to exist here from the beginning, and if so, it's unclear how this planet survived the expansion of the star before it became a white dwarf, or if this is an object that formed from some kind of a remnant that existed around this white dwarf, such as, for example, some kind of a ring. So for all we know, this is actually a new generation of a planet formed from some kind of an ancient planet that became shredded over time. Either way, we know that this system is just a little bit unusual. For example, the white dwarf itself seems to be relatively rich in hydrogen, with a total mass of about 60% of the Sun, and it could be as old as 10 billion years old. So basically, we know that this is an ancient system. That's the only way we can explain such a low temperature. But based on its mass, we know that this is very likely a star that was very similar to the Sun. So in some sense, this actually shows us what might happen to the solar system 6 to 7 billion years in the future. But we also know that this white dwarf at some point was very likely much hotter, which means that this habitable zone was expanded much farther away as well. And that means that at some point in the past, this unusual planet could have been in a habitable zone as well, which of course makes this a super exciting object. And so when this was discovered in 2020, this was the first ever officially confirmed transiting exoplanet around any white dwarf, which allowed researchers to work out a lot of properties of this planet. But there was one property that was missing and researchers really wanted to know about, its temperature. Scientists wanted to find out how cold or how hot this object is, especially since it's in such a tight orbit to a somewhat unusual cold white dwarf. And obviously they wanted to find out everything else about it, including its mass. Initial observations assumed that this was about 13 to maybe 14 masses of Jupiter, suggesting that maybe this was actually a brown dwarf, but this was based on some of the preliminary evidence. And so now, based on this study, researchers worked out pretty much everything by using a very detailed observation from the James Webb Space Telescope. Here, by using observations in the mid-infrared, or using MIRI, they basically confirmed that this is the coldest exoplanet ever seen. Here it seems to have a temperature of about 186 Kelvin, minus 87 Celsius, minus 125 Fahrenheit, which is slightly warmer than the overall temperature in the upper atmosphere of Jupiter, but definitely much, much colder than any exoplanet we've seen so far. It's also obviously much colder than Mars. At the same time, the observations here confirm that this planet is about six times mass of Jupiter, so basically much lighter than previously assumed, with the observations also confirming that this planet is indeed orbiting very close to the white dwarf, and exoplanets seem to find a way to survive around white dwarfs billions of years after a typical star becomes a red giant, with the new observations suggesting that the star system is at least 
9.3 billion years old and basically exists inside what's known as the Forbidden Zone of White Dwarfs, the region where we don't think planets should exist because they should be shredded apart. And so not only is this a confirmation that James Webb is able to detect exoplanets much colder than anything we've seen before, it's also able to detect objects colder than brown dwarfs and objects in orbit of white dwarfs. And even though this planet is actually pretty far away, even for the James Webb, it was still able to detect it despite relatively cold temperatures and a distance. And here it only took approximately one hour. Although here these observations still do not answer some of the other important questions. Why does this planet even exist? Now some of the additional observations might reveal some other planets that could explain some kind of a migration from the outskirts closer to the White Dwarf, or possibly find signs around the White Dwarf that this is actually a result of a second generation of planets formed from the disk. But I guess more importantly, future observations, especially the ones that are being conducted right now in the near-infrared frequencies, will also help us determine what's inside the atmosphere. So basically the future study here will tell us more about the planet's atmosphere, helping us figure out if at any point in the past this could have actually been a somewhat habitable world, or at least have conditions where life could have maybe formed somehow. Once again because in the past the habitable zone was actually much farther away and so this planet could have been much much warmer. Now obviously this is a gas giant and so the chances for life here are somewhat minuscule, but still worth exploring. Which means that in the next few months we're going to get some of the chemical analysis as well and discover the chemical signatures from this bizarre cold planet. And if by some chance we discover things like oxygen, nitrogen, methane, water and possibly some other chemicals, especially organic chemicals, this will suddenly become way more exciting. It might actually turn into the first ever white dwarf planet with potentially habitable conditions. But once again, you can explore this idea a little bit more based on the previous study and the video about this that you can find in the description below. But in general, since in the future, approximately 97% of all stars in the Milky Way are actually going to become somewhat similar to this, they're basically going to be white dwarfs, trying to figure out if such planets are possible and if habitable conditions are possible as well, can tell us just a little bit more about what's going to happen to life in the Milky Way galaxy. But until future discoveries or more analysis, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.